that's the wrong that, that's the wrong goddamn opening son of a fucking bitch wrong fucking opening what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel it's your boy dad Dave. we are here we're live for a little late night podcasting action jesus christ I, I thought it was the old opening and it very much was not ha huh, get your shit together dave hey first show back to doing this shit so hey it happens oh fucking well okie dokie we got a lot to talk about today we're gonna get into some stuff and it's gonna be a good time doing it because it's been a while since we've been able to just come live and talk about shit in the nice regular way that you're used to me doing so and i'm very excited to be bringing it back to you now it's a little bit of a different location i understand and twitch can be a little bit intimidating but buckle up it's gonna be just fucking fine we're gonna get through it all i promise you all right so today we're gonna be talking about a few different things we're gonna be getting into uh tessa blanchard i want to talk about the morbius the Morbius trailer that is out, which absolutely rocked my fucking world, and I loved, 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 loved. And then uh, the, the, the thing I want to open with, the thing I want to talk about to start is just kind of clar clarifying my stance on regulations. So that's the outline for today. I'm going to start with that because the whole Nerd City thing completely went a little bit fucking off the rails and i i'm pro regulations apparently no i'm not pro regulations I, I i know for a fact the government will fuck shit up and i do not like the fact that they have to exist but what i but what i adhere to is personal responsibility and personal responsibility works like this we all know the shit that we should be doing or not be doing and we choose to either do it or not do it when we choose to avoid the personal responsibility, then it's on the platform or our employers of which we are, you know, using their services for to actually uh, adhere to the rules that they put in place. When they do not put those rules in place, then that allows, especially when it's a business model that is of the like of which we have on YouTube, which we are now getting on Twitch, which is now all over the interwebs, which is advertiser based. You're allowing the advertiser to then dictate the rules. When it goes farther than that and it continues to be ignored, as it has been the case on YouTube for a very long time, then you get government regulations, which is where we're going. That is the things that they are going towards. And that's what I have a problem with, because if we go with the first step, if we just have personal accountability, none of this gets to that point. So... I am not, and I'm surprised that anybody is, especially anybody who talks about things for a living, especially anybody who, like, call out culture, whatever we want to call it, talk shows, having conversations, uh, calling out other YouTubers, calling out other creators, you know, making fun of them, taking the piss, whatever the case may be. Part of the hope in that has to be that maybe this will curtail the behavior of the fucking person. You know, it goes back to I'm Alex and so many others. You try to talk to them on a personal level. When that doesn't work, you try to fucking make fun of them. You call them out. You show the ridiculous behavior in hopes that it makes a change. No fucking different than what a lot of people felt about Ricky Gervais taking the piss out of fucking Hollywood. That it, in, in fact, he says it. He says it at the end. After he takes the piss out of Hollywood, he then tells them not to come up and make political statements. There was a cause and a point to the entire fucking thing. So if all that is true, if all that is how things go and move forward in a logical based fucking fashion, then I don't see what the issue is in making any video because it's either all okay or it's not okay. It's all okay. It's not okay. If somebody can make a video and you can make a video responding to that initial claim, I don't understand what was the problem with making the video in the first place. Now, we can't control what happens after a video gets made. We can't control who takes control of it. We can't take uh, control of how it's used uh, potentially against us. But that goes back to the original point. If we have personal accountability, and thank you guys, Summer and Inc. and Fake Ass Spot for the host, I appreciate you guys. If we have personal accountability from the first fucking point, we don't have to worry about the rest of this shit. And you know what? Fucking Keemstar and so many other YouTubers have said, we can police our own. That is part of policing our own. Call out culture. That's part of it. That's the accepted rules of which we live online. Do I like it all the time? Fuck no. I like it as much as I like fucking regulations. But I understand why regulations have come to YouTube and I understand why more were coming. They had a flawed business model from the jump that absolutely, fucking 
absolutely opened the doors to advertisers taking control when they did not like what was going on anymore. That was the problem. That's the issue. And that's what needs to be more focused on. But that's just me. And that's just me. Let's give a little shout out to the chat. We do have the Discord open today. If you want to come in there and talk with me, that's totally fine. We're going to be taking questions on anything you want, including the next two topics that we'll be getting to. And then we're going to take our sexy asses off of here and go to sleep. That's the plan. Uh, fuck Ricky. He, uh, he is an ass clown on Twitter calling trans women's dudes, saying it's not political. Yeah, Ricky also uh, acknowledges the fact he called him. To, see, this is why I don't have a problem with Ricky Gervais. I don't think he's funny. That's always been my norm with Ricky is I just don't think he's very funny. But he acknowledges that he might be the biggest fucking snowflake of all of them. He actually said that on Twitter the other day. He says, I'm the biggest snowflake here. That's why it's funny. I can make these jokes because I am a snowflake myself. So I give him a pass on that. When you admit to what you are and then say what you're saying is jokes, that means I can just simply criticize the jokes and that's it. And that's it. Uh, big shout out Pyoxis. 10 points, 10,000 channel points, baby. That's some good copious fucking earning right there. Uh, not Teddy, I'm only intimidated by penguins and guns. What about a gun with, with a penguin holding it? That's not good. Uh, Snap Lord's in the house. Pyoxis, silence. You support the man stomping on us. That's right. Uh, Joe Martin, hey Dave, today has been wonderful. Fuck the Astros cheater. Red Sox up next. Yeah. Well, you know what? I, I, if we have time. Maybe we'll talk about that, too, if you want to call in and bring that point up at the end of it. I wouldn't mind talking about that because I do think that it's kind of a big story. The, uh, uh, here's why I think it's a big story. And I, you know what? Real quick, we're just going to gloss over it. The Astros got hit for cheating during their World Series run in 2017. They were using uh, telecommunications and other technology to get an unfair advantage. And here's the thing that's fucked up. So they eliminated the Yankees that year from the playoffs. And subsequently, Joe Girardi got fucking fired for it. I got a little bit of an issue with that. It's like, this is not just regular cheating. This is cheating with you can show a direct cause to something. Now, why I'm not going to get on a soapbox about the whole thing is real simple. They came down with some pretty fucking heavy goddamn uh, sanctions. $5 million fine, GM and manager banned for a year. They came down pretty fucking hard. They came down pretty hard. Uh, Jordan, yo, Dave, hope your bollocks are swinging well tonight, baby. My bollocks are always swinging well. Never forget. What's going on, Ice Cream Birdie? How you doing? And yes, Joe Martin, I am back in Germany. So I'm running, mmm, sleep. That's right. Baby, I'm on the bus. Did you rip into Tessie yet? No, I have not. Uh, we're going to get into that in just a moment. Uh, Jordan, I'm English. I think Ricky is a uh, fucking fart box. He's not funny at all. I don't think he's funny. That's the thing. And, and that was my only criticism that I really had over the Golden Globes shit is that I didn't think he was very funny. I didn't think, I thought just him regurgitating memes and jokes off the internet, I didn't think was very well done. Uh, I didn't really feel there was a political agenda to it. He says afterwards there absolutely was not. People shouldn't be outraged that you know, all this stuff because it was just jokes at the end of the day, which I think opens up to fair criticism over the joke set. And that's all I was doing, so... Teddy, did you see the Chris Hansen footage of him knocking on Nissan's door? He said there's more to come from that whole thing. Yeah, I did. And I also <laughs> I heard the 911 call from that bitch on Nissan. <laughs> I got stalkered at my door. What's his name? Chris Hansen. <laughs> Why is Chris Hansen at your door, sir? Uh, because I do some predatory ass shit. Sorry. I hope that you'll still come save me. From Chris Hansen asking me questions. What a fucking bitch. Bitch moment of 2020. Bitch moment of 2004. Oh, God. Aeon, there's five fucking minutes of released audio. And it's goddamn gold. Tommy played the whole fucking thing. It's hysterical. It's a goddamn riot. It's a goddamn riot. Oh, good night. Was it fucking great? It's so funny. Uh uh, Biggie the 911 call was great. It was amazing. Pyoxis, uh, to catch a stalker directed by Greg play theme. I don't have it uh, available and I have other stuff that I want to get to. I don't really feel like that's a huge topic. I kind of want to wait until Hanson releases everything. Cause I got a feeling he might release it himself. So I kind of want to see what Hanson all brings to the table before I get on it too much. It's so good. You guys got to see this. It's so fucking great. All right. No, Joe, uh, actually you don't have to hop into discord. I talked about everything that I already wanted to talk about in that. You're good. 
You're good. I don't really care about baseball right now. I'll care in about six more fucking weeks. Right now, don't care. Hit it on about as much as I could. Uh, Aeon, fuck, man. I am so watching Shopping Point episode all the way through when you're done. It, 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 it's a show. <laughs> they go places. All right. So we, we hit on, uh, hopefully that kind of clarifies my stance on regulations. I'm not pro-regulation. I just understand why they exist. And typically it's because people shirk their own personal responsibility. That's why regulations end up coming in place. And I'll say it again. It's very simple. Personal responsibility is the first fucking step. When you're on somebody else's platform, like we are with Twitch and with YouTube, and we're not doing the things that we're supposed to do, well, then there are wonderful wonderful things right these regulations that youtube and twitch and other places these rules these terms of services that are supposed to be making sure that we're doing it now the problem is they're never enforced properly and even when they are enforced properly they're typically enforced on whatever they want you know sometimes they'll enforce it on this group sometimes they'll enforce it on that group sometimes dave will get hit some hit for something that literally every other fucking youtuber does and sometimes everybody else will just skirt right through it. That's just the reality of it. Now, when you have those inconsistencies, you open the doors to another form of regulations because everybody has somebody that they answer to. And with the business model that most of the internet goes by, advertisers, we have to deal with the bosses, which are the advertisers, the actual people who fucking supply the money to these platforms to then pay us. And that's what they do. They use the media. They go and they fucking make these targeted campaigns to cause things like adpocalypse. It's happened. We've seen it. In fact, there's been two or three by this fucking point that has uh, come on and wiped out numerous fucking people from the platform. Took away their money, took away their desire. Careers ended before they were even began simply because policies were not being enforced in the way that they were supposed to. It's real simple. If the fucking policies are ever enforced on the platform the way that they should be, the way that they're written, well, then we don't really have to worry about the next step, which is the advertisers coming in and using forces like old media to fuck with our lives. And then when that doesn't work, when people are still getting fucked by predators, when people are still fucking getting killed over stupid goddamn stunts like the dumb bitch who shot her fucking husband in the chest with a 45, these shit... These shit will then draw the ire of the next level of sanctions, which unfortunately is the worst level of sanctions, which is government. Because we don't want government involved. Government fucks this shit up. It's not wanting government. It's acknowledging why they're here. And the reality is it starts with us. It starts with personal responsibility and goes up from fucking there. That's my point. That's my welcome to my TED talk. Thank you for coming. That's it. Now, let's go ahead and continue forward with some of the other things that we want to talk about today. And Tessa Blanchard. Uh, If you're a wrestling fan, you're about to be very happy because, yes, we're going to talk a little bit of wrestling. So the first thing I want to hit with Tessa Blanchard is the least of the two important things. Because I'm going to risk being called a misogynist right motherfucking now. Because the reality is I I think having a woman fucking world champion uh, is... If it, it... I just don't understand it. There's still a woman's division in impact wrestling. Is there not? Is there not still a fucking woman's division? So by this goddamn flawed fucking logic, uh, Sammy Callahan could literally, and he's the most violent guy in the world right now. He talks about bashing bitches fucking heads open. Bash your skull open. It's a line he's used. So theoretically, And I would not be surprised if Impact Wrestling were to fucking do this because this sounds exactly like something they would do. Theoretically, Sammy Callahan, out of fucking vengeance, could go ahead and start running roughshod through the fucking women's division. He could start crippling these bitches in the division to then take on whoever the women's champion is at the time, cripple her, and then grab that title belt, and then Tessa and fucking Sammy Callahan have a goddamn championship match for all the marbles, for both the women's and men's wrestling fucking title belts. That's probably where this is going. And if it's not, what's the fucking point of having Tessa Blanchard become the world champion? Now, maybe it works in matches with Sammy Callahan because they're basically the same fucking size. But Jesus Christ, if Brian Cage wouldn't have just went to AEW, what, 
Why wouldn't Brian Cage just come in and squash this woman? It makes no sense to me. It's just like we as wrestling fans, we are expected to allow a lot of things to pass by us. And we don't fucking even for a moment blink an eye because we understand what we're watching is in essence a story of fiction. But when you push the fucking lines too far, when you go to a point that just makes no logical sense, that's when you lose me. And Tessa Blanchard having multiple matches with Sammy Callahan for the world championship is one thing. Maybe I can accept that. You want to put her over? You want to get her to the top of her own division? Fucking fantastic. This is a great way she can hang with the boys. That means she should be dominating all the women. But she lost her woman's championship. Why the fuck would she be going by? And what number one contenders has she beaten in the men's division to earn the fucker? Nothing makes sense about it. It's just a nonsensical storyline that it drives me fucking crazy. I've never understood the need for it. I don't like intergender wrestling. I don't fucking enjoy it. Because I cannot believe for a second that someone like Brian Cage, somebody like Baron Corbin, somebody like Braun Strowman wouldn't simply just fucking snap somebody in fucking half. You know, and Pyoxys, you bring up Rey Mysterio. I, you've heard me say this before. I'm not a big fan of Rey Mysterio going over guys like the fucking Big Show. He, the Big Show could eat Rey Mysterio if he fucking wanted to. He could literally stick two hands inside of Rey's asshole and fucking split him down the middle like a goddamn rust, r- r- wormwood log if he wanted to. So it drives me a little bit crazy. So this is very standard, okay? So there we go. Uh, and fake says sexy star already won the world title of her promotion. Tessa even the first woman to do it. I didn't like when fucking sexy star did it either. You know, I remember that it was fucking retarded then. And this is retarded too, but that's the secondary. That's the lesser of the two stories. What's up deep South, man. How you doing? That's the lesser of the two, two stories because the bigger part of the story and the thing that seems to be getting swept under the rug here, or at least by impact wrestling and very much by Tessa Blanchard, I'm going to tell you guys right now, if you want to be disgusted by just the most nonchalant fucking way of, of trying to shirk criticism, then you need to watch the shit that comes out of Tessa Blanchard's mouth after the fucking world title victory. It's unfucking believable It is un fucking real. For those of you who don't know, Tessa Blanchard in the last few days, and this is actually not the first time this has come up. Uh, has been called out by multiple, multiple, multiple women. Lots of women. More lining up, apparently. Apparently, more stories are about to drop next week as well. I'm hearing that, too. So, there's a lot of stories of bullying. And this all came about because Tessa Blanche did exactly what is the downfall of so many fucking people. She went on a goddamn soapbox and decided to tell people how that they should be. Women need to stop breaking each other down. We need to start lifting each other up. Thank you, young, young and dumb, for the host. Uh, and all this shit. She immediately gets taken to task by women that she has victimized with her bullying. And what we find out, racism, racism as well. The story that is the problem, the story that is absolutely fucking deplorable to me is the story of her in Japan. Apparently this happened in New Japan Pro Wrestling or in Japan at the very least. Uh, she to another wrestler, a black wrestler, called her the N word and spit in her fucking face. Spit in her fucking face. Now, I want to make it really clear. I'm a man of forgiveness. I think people can, can be forgiven, second chances, third chances, umpteen chances, as long as they show contrition and as long as they show that that is an isolated incident and it's not exactly who they are, I can fucking forgive most things because it's really not that big of a deal at the end of the day when we really look at it. Uh, because most things are nuanced. Most things have le- levels to it. You know, it's really, it's not always cut and dry. If she were just to have, in anger, said, you N-word, we could probably get through that. We could probably get past it. It's probably not that big of a deal, right? If shit like that happens, stupid things get said in the heat of the moment. It's still not very good, and you're probably a bad person, but at least it could be forgivable, Correct. If you spit on somebody, 
it's a pretty bad fucking thing to do, but doesn't necessarily on its own mean that you're a racist or you're a misogynist or you're any type of bigot in any sense of the word. However, when you use a racial slur in a derogatory fashion directed towards somebody while you're looking them in the fucking eyes and then spit in their fucking face, you are a racist. And there's almost no way of getting around it. There's no way of reframing it. There's no way of spinning it. There's no way of making this a lesser fucking issue. Not until you come to some sort of contrite stance. And what has Tessa Blanchard decide to fucking do? The first thing, the first thing she does is deny the allegations on Twitter. Deny them while at the same time talking about how she's not the person she used to, she used to be. That's real upsetting to me because that's problematic in a lot of fucking ways because she's lying straight the fuck out while she's trying to make it like it's almost like copping a plea deal. Right. It's like, you know what? I'll admit to the fact that maybe I'm not the best person in the world at times, but I didn't do this. But then multiple people, three, four, I think maybe even a fifth person has 100 percent corroborated the story has said it 100% happened and provided the context to it. It was hate-filled, and that is the bottom fucking line. So Impact pulls her from the the uh, the pre-show, the, the press conference for the world title match. So that tells us maybe they're going to do the right thing here. Uh, we know some other promotions have pulled her as well because this is at least needs to be investigated, needs to be looked at, and Tessa Blanchard at least deserves, excuse me, Deserves a chance to be able to put it in proper context or at least apologize publicly, apologize and try to make this right in some hell. Even fucking Hogan tried to apologize for fuck's sake. And and, and the black delegation of the wrestling audience and and the wrestlers in the back, they didn't accept it at first. Now it's kind of been a little bit more accepted, not 100 percent. But it's been a little bit more accepted. Tessa Blanchard didn't do any of this. Instead, Impact goes ahead and goes forward with the plans to put the title on Tessa Blanchard and then in a. I don't know if she was expecting this not to be aired. I don't know if she was expecting this not to be leaked. She goes on one of the most deflective fucking diatribes I think I've ever heard. And I think Fake has made a very good point in my wrestling chat. And I got a little wrestling group where I have some people post some stories on wrestling. He makes a really good point that it almost sounds militant. It almost sounds racially militant. Where she starts talking about, you deal with one of us, you deal with all of us. What the fuck does this mean? Why would you say this? Did did Sammy Callahan knock your fucking brains in that much, you ditzy fucking broad? Why the fuck would you ever say that? Is I'm sorry that difficult to say? Is I'm sorry I'm not that person anymore so hard to come to? I don't understand this. Now, you think by holding the Impact World fucking Championship and saying we're not all perfect human beings and all this type of shit that that you're representing the world title or this fucking company the right goddamn way? How does this make sense? How are you a role model? How are you doing this shit? It makes absolutely no sense. And here's the thing. If anybody wants to come back, well, she's not meant to be a role model. Then why the fuck are you making her the first woman's champion in your fucking company's history and going over a man? Obviously, this storyline is to inspire the next fucking group of young women coming into the sport. And that's who they have to look up to. That's who they have to fucking bow down to. That's the fucking example. A woman holding a fucking title belt above her head while shirking any and all responsibility. And Fake says it pretty good right in the chat. If you're against me, you're against all of us. Whether you like me or not, I'm one of the best wrestlers in the world and I am a world champion. If there was any doubt in her behavior, he goes on, she all but confirmed it herself and and never apologized. Instead of gave a lame excuse, everybody makes a mistake. Excuse and then went on to put herself over. What a condescending entitled cunt. Perfectly fucking said. Perfectly fucking said. Condescending entitled cunt. Jesus Christ. I'm sorry is not so hard to say. You spit in another woman's face while calling her the N-word. And and you're just not that person anymore? It's been two fucking years. 
And by the way, there are reports of you fucking being a cunt to a bully, an elitist in the back to women in the past year itself. What the fuck are we talking about? And this is the type of goddamn behavior that's going to be condoned by Impact Wrestling. It makes no sense to me. It makes absolutely no sense to me. So it, it really did kind of fire me up. And I'm not, I'm not trying to fucking get on the soapbox. I know I, I, I'm standing on the soapbox at this fucking point. But I'm not really wanting to be on the score, soapbox. So what's up, Scorpion? I'm sorry if I didn't say hello to you. I'm in a little bit of a rant mode right now because I'm kind of irritated. But it's good to have you here. And hopefully you'll stick around for a few minutes. But it's, I just don't understand this. I don't get what is so hard about simply showing a little bit of contrition and moving the fuck on. Instead, deflect. And I'm wondering if Impact Wrestling may have told her to do it because they were going to go ahead with their fucking plans. And maybe they're telling her not to. And fuck Joey Ryan, too. Fuck Joey Ryan. This motherfucking soft snowflake bitch who got all bent out of shape over fucking Jim Cornette's joke, which, by the way, was fucking shitty as well and borderline fucking racist, if not completely. Fucking Joey goddamn Ryan, of all fucking people, acts like this isn't a big deal. Like the situation, like his money's not going to be affected because people are mad about this situation. What the fuck? What is this? Is this just the land of fucking insanity right now? It, did, did people squeeze his dick too many times and it fucking rushed the blood back through his body and burst an embolism in his fucking brain? Is that what happened? It's the only thing that I can fucking think of because that is borderline fucking uh, ab abysmal levels of retardation. It makes no fucking sense to me. It just fucking hell, man. Ugh. Anyway, let me get a drink of water here. Mm, 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 mm. Don't worry about telling Joey Ryan that he's fucking stupid. Uh, or not Joey Ryan. Don't, wor don't worry about telling Joe Martin that he's stupid. We already know Joe Martin's stupid. He doesn't read a room very well. I'm not talking about CM Punk right now. That's why I'm simply not responding to the things that uh, Joe Martin's saying in the chat. <laughs> Let's see here. Fake. Joey Ryan dismissing everyone's rightful anger over this as nothing but Twitter outrage. What a fucking jerk off. He was literally complaining about the Liv and Lana storyline two weeks ago as if he doesn't do the same thing. E absolutely. Everybody will pontificate until it gets to something that they um, that they 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 the they feel is acceptable. And then they become a hypocrite. Joe Martin, I can't say something off topic. No, you can't ask me questions when I'm in the middle of a fucking rant when the chat's on screen. And you, you know, he's, read the room. A fucking Deep South man was right. Read the fucking room. Read the goddamn room. <sighs> uh, old school Matt Fake wrestling is full of hypocrisy. Yeah, but I mean, when are we just going to continue to accept it? Yeah, fuck, fuck Gail Kim too. Gail Kim trying to call out WWE for racism and all of this type of shit never gives very good examples of it other than the fact that she wasn't goddamn pushed. <laughs> oh, they didn't push me. Must be racist. Eh. Nothing else to really go on. She's very, she's always very blase and vague on anything that she talks about. But yet this isn't a problem to her. Why? Because it's in the company she cares about. Because it's in, it's with people that she cares about. It's fucking insane. It's craziness. And it really does. It, it's insulting. It's insultingly stupid. And I'm just getting tired of it. This is part of the reason why I'm, I'm pulling away from wrestling. Because now all these wrestlers have these platforms, which they've never had before, because now they're not in kayfabe. They're not in kayfabe anymore. They're on their fucking Twitters and they're talking about things as real people. They're representing themselves and they're going in the ring and people are seeing that person. That's who they're seeing. Fucking social media and, and the accessibility to it has killed this fucking industry as far as from a creative standpoint, because you can't do storylines. It's ridiculous when WWE tries to push a lesbian storyline with a known non-lesbian when lesbians are in the fucking company ready, willing, and able to go. I guarantee you Daria would fucking lick a pussy in the middle of the ring if they asked her to. She'd fucking do it. She'd lick Mandy Rose's snatch fucking clean. Clean. I'd fucking take the clitty litter out of that shit. We all know this. And she would fucking too. Now she has a wife. I don't want to be too disrespectful. She'd lick her wife's pussy in the fucking ring if she felt that it would be a good storyline. And it'd be acceptable. They're lesbians. It makes sense. These people are not 
actors. It's not that type of entertainment. It's a pseudo line, a line that shouldn't be broken into the reality, into the real world. And that's exactly what we fucking do with this social media shit. These wrestlers that are able to push their actual agendas. We've seen Lana Rousseff and so many others blow up actual storylines, ongoing storylines happening in wrestling, blow them up on their Twitter channels. Their, their, their Twitter. Oh, God, I sound like a fucking boomer. They're on their own Twitter accounts by um, by by showing things that are in direct defiance of the on screen story. It makes no goddamn sense to me. It's fucking crazy. All right. Uh, if you guys have more you want to talk about, you have more things that you want to get off your chest on the wrestling part, get your ass over to Discord. We will take some calls here in just a few minutes. I want to talk about Morbius to end the uh, my little spiel here. Uh, we, we've talked about some heavier stuff. We talked about some ridiculous stuff. And now let's talk about something awesome. Morbius, which I wasn't even aware was in production. I had no clue was even in production. Now, when I first saw the screen, the title screen, Morbius, Morbius, I got very excited. I'm like, is this the living fucking vampire? Is this, this is Marvel? Is this a Marvel movie? And then my heart kind of dropped a little bit when it's from the same creators as Venom. So it's a, it's a co-production once again between Marvel and Sony, which Hit or miss, hit or miss. I wasn't a huge fan of Homecoming, Spider-Man Homecoming, but everything that I've seen of Far From Home, fucking great movie. Fucking great, great, great movie. Venom, I felt, was very weird, but also very Venom-y. I, it, it made sense. So maybe I shouldn't be too hesitant on, on a Morbius movie. The trailer was fucking fantastic. The, this trailer looks so good. This trailer looked absolutely amazing. It just, it felt like, it, now granted, we're once again having to sit through origin stories, which is never fun, which is never fun. But this is one that not everybody knows as well. Most of the uh, time, I think most people, when they think of Morbius, the, the, unless they are really up to date on all of the, the comic book stuff and they're just fans of Morbius in, in general, they just think about the version from the X-Men fucking cartoon. That, which is not a great depiction of Morbius. <laughs> it's just not. Uh, but this was dark. It had really good tone to it. Um, it feels like they're going to really play up the horror aspects of Morbius's character. All this type of stuff. I think it's pretty exciting. Uh, to see how they're going to do that. And then what I just saw in the chat by now, Teddy, do you think Michael Keaton is playing Vulture in this movie? I, I think based off of what we saw, it looks like that he's going to, which is exciting because I fucking loved it. It's the only thing I loved about Homecoming was Michael Keaton. He was amazing in that flick. What a great Vulture. It was a fantastic representation of Vulture. Absolutely loved it. Now, my question about is I wasn't really sure on the timeline, the time frame when this movie took place. Like this movie could have been a little bit before Homecoming. Maybe it was after. We're not 100% sure. But I will say more than likely, more than likely, that was Vulture. That was the same character. I, you don't put Michael Keaton, who is cast in another movie by the exact same fucking thing, I, I don't see how you possibly couldn't be doing that. It would make no sense. Michael Keaton being cast by the same group, the same universe as two different characters, that seems a little bit of a stretch to me, especially because it seemed like he was kind of like a janitor or something of that nature. I'm not 100% sure what he was supposed to be, but loved it. I love that little moment. And you don't put it at the end of the trailer either if it's not meant to be as a pop moment. So it was 100% going to be uh the the vulture character carl uh morbius getting sinister six together i think it's possible that might be where it's going to and it wouldn't be a bad idea let's consider this for a moment we've had uh and i do think that ultimately the mcu will gain full control of the, this franchise i do i think that event they're coming to this eventually um and when that happens i think that this is setting it up because it almost feels like 
with Morbius, who, you know, with the Sinister Six and all of that storyline that they have to play with, this could be the beginning of, like, the antithesis of the Avengers. Not saying that they're going to be rivals to the Avengers or anything of that nature, but just like we had all these build-up movies uh, leading to the creation of a superhero group, now it looks like we might be getting some standalone movies of people who are going to be uh, the, the, the bad guy group. And maybe we'll get two, three, four movies that put this group together and then they could start wreaking havoc. Maybe this is who uh, goes against the fucking X-Men when we get a new X-Men movie, a new X-Men relaunch once again for the umpteenth time. Maybe this is how they uh, go back into a Fantastic Four universe because, you know, they want to get that property off the ground again because there's a lot to play with there with Fantastic Four. So you could do a lot in that realm as well. You can go with Venom. There's so many things that you can do and play with it, and it would be fucking amazing to see. So I'm excited to see where they're going to go. And I think based off of Marvel's history of how they build movies, this could be the, the, the route that they're going. So we'll see. We shall see. Uh, let's see what the chat's saying. Joe Martin, uh, better bring William to play Green Goblin. Uh, William Defoe? No, we don't need William Defoe. We don't need that. Because that's a different Spider-Man movie. We don't need that. We, we don't need William I, I, I disagree with that. Biggie, it's after Far From Home. There is a Spider-Man graffiti. Now, okay, all right. I did see that. I wasn't sure. I didn't go back and look at it, so I wasn't 100% sure, so I'm glad that you caught that. I, I thought in that moment that I saw Spider-Man, but I didn't stop it. I meant to go back. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, Jordan, I wonder who they are going to have in Sinister Six. I have no idea. Biggie, the only Sinister Six is lead, led by Doc Ock, and the rest are imitators. Yes, but I also love that we got a little bit, and I understand that calling him Doc doesn't necessarily mean anything, but I love the fact that we got a little bit of a Doc reference there. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, Deep South Man, thank you for the host. I appreciate you. Fake ass thought, the fact that we might see Tom Hardy as Venom and Tom Holland's Spider-Man movie gets my butthole puckered up, I think it'd be a lot of fun. I liked the, I didn't hate the Venom movie. I liked the Venom movie. I didn't love the Venom movie. I thought it was a little uh, a little too fractured at times, but it, it, it all like I said earlier, it was Venomy. It, it, it made sense like Deadpool was Deadpool-y. This was Venomy. So I didn't really have a problem with it. Uh Jordan, I want to see Carnage. Hell yeah, especially Woody Harrelson's Carnage. Oh, a Woody Harrelson Carnage has my nipples standing erect. Uh, Carl G, probably be phase five before we get another Fantastic Four movie. More than likely, Carl. But I want to see it. I love Fantastic Four. Personally, I would love to see that because it opens up so many other possibilities, especially with Spider-Man's linkage to the Fantastic Four. They could do, we can get a Namor. We can get so many things. It would be a lot of fun to see. Uh, Summer Inc., it really seems like the timeline-wise, Morbius is probably bringing the Sinister Six together, judging by the clues in the trailer. I agree, uh, but we won't know until it comes out. They played with a lot of different tones in that trailer, and that's why I like the trailer so much. It kind of keeps you guessing. There's some clues, but there's also not a whole lot of, like, right in your face exactly what we're going to see, and I like that. And, and it feels like a horror movie, which I also really like. I like that it had a very horror movie-ish tone. Uh, not always the best way to go in a superhero movie, but if anyone's appropriate for it, it's Morbius. So it makes a lot of sense to me. Deep South, I've been waiting for years to see my boy Craven the Hunter on the big screen. Yep, yep. Fake. I like Venom. It was fun. Love Hardy's fine ass. I know you do. I know you love Tom Hardy's fine ass with a, with a fiery, fiery, fiery passion. All right, so let me ask you guys, are you excited based off of the trailer that we got? Are you excited about the Morbius movie? Are you going to go watch it? Are you going to put up your mad ducats or not? Uh, Carl G, Fantastic Four saved Stan Lee and Marvel in the 60s. It really is the OG that deserved a great movie. I, you know, I'm going to say something that might not be popular. I actually like the first movie. The, the, the first movie with, uh, with Captain America before he became Cap with, oh, uh, my girl. Jessica fucking Alba. I liked that movie. I didn't hate it. It was goofy, but I liked it. I thought the movie worked for the most part. It got into the origin story. They could have done Dr. Doom better. They could have done Dr. Doom a million fucking times better, but I did like it. The second movie was absolute fucking trash. <laughs> the second movie was garbage. Uh, you know, to waste any great character is one thing, but you can't waste fucking Silver Surfer like that. Silver Surfer is such a great character and everything with, with Galactus and all this shit, and you just threw it away. You, you wasted such 
a fucking opportunity. And it was so frustrating because there's so much there to play with. There's so much there to play with. But they just fucked it. So, ah, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the real luckle, uh, with them releasing a new wave of Fantastic Four Pops, there's probably a new movie in the works. It's like early works. It's very possible. It's very, very possible. Quiet Drone, I'm wondering if they will make a Doctor Doom at the next Avengers level, uh, level threat, uh, where it's not just a few people getting together. I'm hoping Doctor Doom is the next, that makes the most sense. Doctor Doom is an incredibly powerful fucking villain in the Marvel Universe. Uh, he he he's a uniting figure of bad guys at times. He also is a, a a chaos agent of his own. He his reasons are fantastic. But can you do Doctor Doom without having an established Fantastic Four uh, franchise in the MCU? I don't think you can do one before the other unless you just don't do another origin movie and you just allow them to come in as like almost a spillover. Like we're getting all this carnage from Doctor Doom and they just kind of move we, we get these characters and it's like we already know they exist they could do that but i'm not sure if i'd love it uh summer and ink i'll watch morbius feel like i haven't seen that villain for a while because we haven't seen that villain for a very long time it's been a very long time carl not seen it but i'm excited for any comic book movie highly recommend you going and checking out the trailer carl yeah i think you'll like it i think with your taste i think you will like it i think you'll like it a lot Deep South Man says he will put his mad ducats for it. Uh, fake, I know nothing about Morbius, but it looks good. Uh, Carl, it was good, but it wasn't great. Fair enough. Quiet Drone, what are you talking about? There is no Silver Surfer movie. No, but he was in. Yeah, right. Okay, we're just uh, <laughs> we're forgetting that it happened. Yeah. It was very unfortunate. Jordan Blade saved the Marvel. Da -da -da -da. I'm actually excited about seeing the next Blade movie. I like Blade. I, I like the first two Blade movies. Blade 3. Yeah, Ryan Reynolds swing and a miss, bud. Ryan Reynolds, Jessica Biel, Triple H, so many others. What a fucking swing and a miss that movie was. And I even liked the inclusion of Dracula. I really did. I thought there was it was just a bad movie. Just a bad movie. Blade 1 is incredible. And Blade 2 is immensely fun. Just a fun, 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 fun fucking movie. But Blade 1 is great. Great movie. Not Teddy, got to be honest, when I found out that Jared Leto was Morbius, I was a little nervous because of the travesty of his Joker, but the trailer looks cool, and the fact Vulture is most likely going to be in it makes me excited. What I liked about Jared Leto as Morbius is I didn't even realize that it was him. He looked so different. He, The metamorphosis that he takes in the movie, especially when we get to see different points of the movie, when we get to see a more frail version of him, then we get to see a more normalized version, then we get to see the more vamped out version I didn't even for a second think that it was Jared Leto. I forgot that it was him, so I really liked that. Uh, Makad agreed Dr. Doom was a downfall of the first movie. It was definitely a, a point that 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 gave it issues. I agree with that. It, and I like the actor, too, man. He was He's a good actor, but not in that movie. Not in that fucking flick. Deep South, man, I actually like the most recent one. Michael B. Jordan as Human Torch was great. I'm going to forget that you said that. <laughs> I'm going to forget that you said that. That fucking movie was a trash fire wrapped in a goddamn diaper with Indian food. It was awful. And then that diaper with Indian food in the trash fire movie was then shoved up the ass of a skunk. A skunk with IBS. It was not great. Leaping Lizard. I'll wait until Morbius comes on Disney Plus to see it. Fair enough. Fair enough, Mr. Leaping Lizard. Uh, Carl G., the most recent one was dog shit. Yes, yes, yes. Deep South, man, they did Galactus dirty, too. He was uh, basically a big fart cloud. He, he was just a big, big fart cloud. Quiet Drone, oh, yeah, you have to do a Fantastic Four movie, um, just like you'll have to redo the X-Men again. Yeah, unfortunately. I mean, I guess they don't have to. If they want to go off the Days of Legend, Legends Past and Apocalypse and, and even the Dark Phoenix, that's fine. I like the actors. They're established. We have two sets of established actors that they can pull from, but more than likely, they're going to have to redo it again. But because it's so well established as it is, then we can kind of thank Deadpool for this as well. We have characters and we have the the house. We you know that he's made reference to other X Men. And in fact, we even did get other X Men. Now that I think about it, we had that quick little moment where Ryan Reynolds was bitching about not having any other X Men because of how much money that the original Deadpool made. We can't even get a little cameo, and then right behind him, we got a cameo of that the more current 
iteration of the X-Men. So maybe that is canon. You never know. But that's the thing. We never fucking know with Deadpool. That's what makes Deadpool so great. Uh, Pyox is so like a soft reboot. Just throw them in there and see what happens. I think it's because it's you could do this with either Fantastic Four or X-Men, I think, because of how established they are. I think it, it's something they could do. Not sure it'll work, but I don't know. Carl G, I watched the latest Birds of Prey trailer, though, and it looked like a lot of fun. It did kind of look like fun. I'm just not sold on it. I just don't know. It looks kind of like the Suicide Squad in that we're going to get a whole bunch of bad guys that are still being humanized. And they're not. These are villains. These are fucking villains. I just like if we're going to have a bunch of villains, we got to have them be villainous. And the problem is we like uh, Harley Quinn so much. And we love Margot Robbie so much. And we love Margot Robbie in those little fucking so shorts uh, so, so much. It's going to be hard to, to look at these people as fucking villains and not just anti-heroes. Because there's a big difference between an anti-hero, which I feel everybody in Suicide Squad was, and actual villains. See, with, uh, with, 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 the, with what they're going to do, hopefully with the uh, Morbius movie is that they create this super villain group that's actually going to go do evil shit. Actually let them go do evil fucking shit. That's what I'd like to see there. Biggie, bring back Wesley Snipes. I wouldn't be shocked if Wesley Snipes end up making a little cameo in that movie, to be honest. Jordan, Blade 1, 2, or Brilliant Number 3 is Big Floppity Dump. I agree. Leaping Lizard, Wesley Snipes is coming back as the old guy. Can't remember his name. Oh, Whistler. Oh, is he Really? I didn't know that. He's he's going to be Whistler. I like that. I like that a lot. I do. Carl, also Marvel know how to get the best of actors and characters, whereas DC only utilizes some. I agree with that. Fake, I don't think Jared Leto is a bad actor necessarily, just not a good joker. Not a lot of pop. Not a lot of people knock every role they're given out of the park. I agree, but I mean, I'm not a big fan of Jared Leto. I'm just not a huge fan of him. I do think he's a good actor. Don't get me wrong. But I'm just not a big, I can't really point to too many movies that he's been in and go, God, I fucking loved him in this. And then his biggest role that, you know, that he could have really taken his career to that next level because of the lineage of the actors who have played the Joker. It was an ungodly firestorm of dog shit. So it's a little bit of a problem, but hell he's redeemed himself a little bit in my eyes with how he d has done Morbius, at least in the trailer. It looks fantastic. Biggie. I wonder if Spidey will come in and kick his ass at the end of the movie. It's always possible. <laughs> Fake. I didn't see the last fantastic four movie and I'm perfectly okay with that. Yes. Yeah, stay away from it. Avoid it like the plague. Quiet Drone, the most recent Fantastic Four, had a really good design for the thing, but that was really the only redeeming quality of that one. Yeah, that's the, we're having to dig deep there. Carl, man, I love Sansa Stark as Jean Grey. I did too, man. I, you know, there was a lot of great casting in those X-Men movies. There was a lot. Jennifer Lawrence was good. Oh, the shit, everybody was good. They were really well. I just, Dark Phoenix didn't work. Dark Phoenix didn't work. It's, it's such a hard fucking movie to make from its origins to the scope of power to the reasons why ultimately Dark Phoenix never destroys the galaxy. It's a hard sell. It worked on the comic book pages. And I wouldn't even say masterfully at times, but it still worked. It's a little bit hard to transfer to the big screen. It's, it's, got, it's got issues. It's got a lot of issues. Um, Let's see... Deep South, I want them to cast Charlie Sheen as Wolverine. That'd be hilarious. I think he's older than Hugh Jackman. No. Uh, will they ever replace Wolverine and with who? I don't know. You know, they've kind of already set it up with Logan where they're just going to kind of go to the, uh, to the, to the, uh, to the clone character, X-22. Sorry. Sorry, nerds. I apologize. Can't remember what she was. Uh, maybe that's where they're going to go so they don't have to replace Hugh Jackman, because you can't replace Hugh Jackman. Now, I don't feel like this is the same as Batman, where it's been a while since that character's been really done right. And a lot of people make the argument that they didn't like Michael Keaton all that much as Batman, although I think Michael Keaton was fantastic. Some people, like me, feel Val Kilmer was the best Batman that we got of the bunch. Val Kilmer crushed that role. Then we got Clooney. He was fucking terrible. Christian Bale was great in the way, <gasps> swear to me, you know, and all that fucking shit. But he, he was overshadowed in both of his movies by the other actors who played the villains. And then Batfleck is by far the most 
polarizing. I mean, I wouldn't even call Clooney polarizing. He had nips. Fuck him. It's over. But I really liked Affleck as Batman. I really did. He knifed the motherfucker in the dick. I was all for that fucking shit. And now we're going to get the twinkly vampire man as the new Batman. So we'll see how it goes there. It's, it's not always easy to replace. But here's the thing. When you look at something that was done so correctly, like Wolverine. Wolverine was cast absolutely 100% perfectly as Hugh Jackman. And he's done it for a long time. It's the same problem that they have with Iron Man. You can't reassign a character to Iron Man after the job that Robert Downey Jr. did. It was out of the park. It was phenomenally good. It was it was epically perfect. So it's hard to do. It's really, really difficult. Charlie Sheen would have been saber tooth. Good God. Uh, yeah, that's right. Winning. Jordan, I would love to see Deadpool versus the Marvel Universe. Uh, the comic was brilliant. It'd be a lot of fun, but they would have to really, it would have to be a multiverse storyline, I feel, at this point. Fake, kind of like what they did with the Tom Holland Spider-Man. They didn't give him another origin story to just throw him in the mix. Yeah, I think that's what you kind of have to do at this point. Because we know that it kind of where it was. Taxidome, hi Dave. What's good, everyone? Not much was good with you, baby boy. Leap and Lizard, I hope they don't replace Wolverine and just go with the girl, girl version. They set it up so well with Logan, I don't see why they wouldn't. You know, why do you make this movie if that's not the obvious replacement? And she did a really good job. I can't wait to see her as a more grown-up version. It could be a lot of fun. Teddy, nah, I can't get behind Birds of Prey. It just doesn't look good to me, not even fun. Fair enough. I'm, I'm reserving judgment for now. I'm holding my judgment back. Quiet Drone, Deadpool 3 will be a romantic comedy and Deadpool trying to get into Death's Pants the entire movie. Wouldn't shock me. I'm just wondering how much from the end credits of Deadpool 2 is actually kind of, you know, canon. I have no idea with them. They have a goddamn time machine device. They could do whatever the fuck they want now. Cable's there. Shit. Deep South, I like X-23. Thank you, X-23. I like X-23. Uh, then Thanos returns. Yep, that's always an issue as well. Jordan Suicide Squad was awful. They made Deadshot look like a bitch. I agree. Uh, the real Luckle, X-23. Thank you, guys. I was close. I was only one away. It's not so bad. Quiet Drone. Hugh Jackman already said he won't be doing another movie. Yeah, but he's also said that and kind of already did another. I don't know. He's. I got a feeling that Ryan Reynolds will get him to dust off the claws one more time. Uh, summoning, I wonder if X-Men's Dark Phoenix storyline would work better in a television format, given that there's more time to actually do the entire story. Ding, 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 ding. I don't understand why that hasn't already happened. A Dark Phoenix television series is exactly episodic. Let them fucking go into all the nuances of Dark Phoenix, the history, the origins of that entity. They could do so many things, and they could set up Jean Grey in a completely different way. And you don't have to do the origins of the X-Men to do it. You could have them just going after a, a current event in X-Men history that we're already aware of. You know, they could put it in a timeline frame. They could do so many different things and just pick up from that point. Uh, Carl Ben Affleck is the best Batman. Oh, let's calm down. <laughs> let's calm down there. Quiet, John. I'm really interested to see how Robert Pattinson will pull it off. Yeah, I, he's a good actor. You know, I'm not poo-pooing Robert, Pat Robert Pattinson as Batman, especially if they do like a... Batman Begins type storyline. Well, maybe we get an older version. I, I would love to see um, Affleck kind of pass the torch to Patterson and we have a little bit of an older uh, Batman passing the torch and, and, and recruiting and making this new Batman out of Robert Patterson. I think it could be a lot of fun. Fake, I like, I feel like the Harley's character in general has become more of an anti-hero in recent years, and Margot has just exemplified it, or amplified it, rather. People have just really grown to love her. Because how the fuck can you not love Margot Robbie? That's why she was so great to play Sharon Tate in, uh, in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And, and look, most of you are too old to, to know this. I only know this because I've watched every movie that she's been in, and because I kind of have this fascination with her. Sharon Tate... Why it was such a big deal when she was murdered was not only because of the fact that she was eight months pregnant. She was fucking red hot, man. A lot of people felt that she was like uh, almost that, that next big pop in, in, in the industry. She was gorgeous. So many stars and people just gravitated around her, you know, because there was something about her. And Margot Robbie is exactly that same thing. This gorgeous woman flooded with talent, can basically do anything. It's just, she's phenomenal, and, and that's why it was so apropos that she uh, played that character. Quiet Drone, he will always be Cedric Diggory to me. <laughs> Not that he, two characters from the X-Men films you can't replace, in my opinion, is Deadpool and Wolverine. Agreed. Uh, yeah, Idris Elba would be a good Batman. I wouldn't mind it. I wouldn't be against it. 
I'm gonna be against it. And it, it's 2020. You know, it is what it is at this point. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be totally against it. it it's gonna be a hard sell. You know, it'll be a hard sell. But I think it would. He's a phenomenal actor. Uh, Quiet Drone. He uh, absolutely hates Twilight because that skank ass bitch cheated on him with the producer. Fuck Kristen Stewart. That's right. Leap Lizard. Only way to uh, they could do Dark Phoenix right is stretch it out through three movies and tell the entire story. Yeah, I think you can do that with a television series. You, know, you can do it two, three, four, five, six fucking seasons. You can go as long as you want, and you can get as nuanced, as detailed, as in-depth as you fucking want to get. It's fucking great. Uh, guys, by the way, if you want to get into the Discord and uh, sound off real quick, we're going to be wrapping up real soon because, believe it or not, we've almost done an hour. We are doing beer chugs tonight. If we hit the fucking donation goal, we'll do a beer chug for you. Make sure you support the channel. We're going to be doing this every night. Different topics, whatever's on my mind, whatever is making my dick hard that day, that's what we're going to talk about. If you have things you want me to talk about, make sure you hit me up on Twitter and let me know those things because I'm really open to talk about anything. I'm excited to be doing the talk shows again. I'm not having too many issues with my computer at the moment, which is nice because I'm not asking it to do anything else. So hopefully we can keep that going as well because here's the thing. I'm sorry I didn't come back on after earlier. My computer completely was starting to show me the same signs that it showed yesterday, and it scared the fuck out of me. I don't know what I'm going to do if this computer goes down. I, I have no way to replace it. I don't have another computer. My, my desktop is already broken when I got back. I got a broken phone, and that's it. I got I got nothing. So if this goes down, I am what the, the Spanish call el fucked, what the French call la fucked. What the American called fucked. It's not good. So I'm just, I'm really worried about it and uh, I'm not happy. So, but it is what it is. I'm doing everything I can to keep it up and running. Uh, but it seems the more that I do with it, gaming, music, all that stuff, it's just, it's just winding it down, man. So I'm going to, I'm going to try to keep things this float afloat as long as I can. And I kind of let the anxiety get to me today. And I do apologize for that, that I didn't come back on, but I wasn't going to pass this up. I was going to be here and do the talk show for you guys. And I appreciate you to the ones who showed up and supported tonight. You're fucking awesome. And I love you. Uh, fake. I think Edward Sullen will actually do a fine, uh, do fine as Batman. He'd gone through smaller indie films, pretty much anything besides twilight. I think that he'll be a good Bruce Wayne. At least I agree. I agree with you. I think he's going to do a good job. Uh, Jordan Logan Noir is one of my favorite. Uh, Logan's so good. Logan is so much fun, man. In a dark way, but so much fun because we get to see these characters that we know, especially you know Professor Xavier and Logan himself in a completely different way. We get to see them as broken men, broken fucking men, and it's this redemption film. It's this origin story of X twenty three. It's just it's it's a dynamite movie. It really is. And we have Deadpool to thank for it because if Deadpool doesn't come around and prove the rated R audience will fucking watch these movies, we don't get Logan. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Ryan Reynolds. Carl G., they've got the same writers on board for Deadpool 3, so I don't see why they shouldn't keep things in Deadpool 2 canon because they have a fucking time machine, Carl. They have a time machine and there's already some sort of link towards the MCU. Ryan Reynolds has almost kind of talked about how, you know, th that these movies are going to be integrating at some point. And when you have a time machine, what's stopping him from fucking going and grabbing Thanos? You know what I mean? It's like, it just, it, I don't know if we want this technology. It may not be a good thing to have. Not in the hands of goddamn Deadpool. He doesn't care. He couldn't even kill Hitler. He couldn't even kill baby Hitler. <laughs> Fake Patterson recently made a movie with William DeFuck. The fair, titled The Lighthouse. I've heard great things about it. I think it's psychological horror. I might check it out tonight, actually. Good stuff. Jordan, Dark Phoenix is a TV show. It'd be amazing. I would like a Willow from Buffy TV show. I will, you know, I like Willow and I love uh, Michelle Rosen Michelle Rosenberg. No, no, that's not right. Uh, the actress, I always forget her name, but I like her a lot. Uh, I, Willow, I don't know, man. I love Buffy so much, but I don't think I want to see a Willow show i don't know if i want to see that i'm not i'm not i don't know i don't know if i could do that yeah uh carl if they were uh doing a passing of the torch of the batman it should have gone through batman beyond line but i think that it's just going to be a younger bruce wayne batman story more than likely which i'm okay with i'm okay with that too fake my question is does joaquin continue to play joker will robert's batman continue off what joker did will they be in the same universe i'd like to see i don't think that they have to mainly because 
uh, the more that I now now that I've seen the Joker, and I, especially now that I've seen a lot of the reactions and Easter eggs and things we may have missed, I'm 100 percent convinced that this might just be a standalone story of a very sick man, of a very sick man. And I don't think any of the events actually happened. I think we just saw a psychotic delusion. I don't think anything happened in that movie. I really believe that. And I think that they could do a sequel where we actually see the actual origins if they want to. It's a mind fuck of a movie. When you watch it a couple times and you start really picking up on the things that they kind of laid in there for you to see, there's so much disillusionment. Disillu- uh, Allison Hannigan, thank you. Fuck me. Michelle, fuck. What was I trying to call her? Christ almighty. Thank you, Allison Hannigan. I wasn't anywhere close. Fuck me. Wasn't anywhere goddamn close. Uh, Tate was the next Marilyn Monroe. I don't know about that. Marilyn Monroe stands alone. That's why she's on my wall in three different fucking places. But I, I don't disagree with that. Not a hundred percent, at least. Margot Robbie is Harley Quinn. Is Quinn is pure fat fuel. Yep, yep, yep. Although some people still don't like her New Jersey accent. Uh, Jordan, Danny Dyer for the next Batman. Oi, you dirty little mug! I'm Batman. <laughs> yes. Uh, Logan was awesome says Aeon Carl G how many 11 Oscar nominations will Joker walk home with you know this kind of feels like a movie that might disappoint at the at the Academy Awards I don't I, I'm basing that off nothing but it just feels like one of those movies with as much hype as it had and the success that it had that it might kind of strike out it might Leaping Lizard. Uh, Logan is right up there as my favorite Marvel movie tied with Deadpool. I agree. And I think Joker was just a standalone. At least that's how it was advertised. It feels like that. I agree. Carl G, you got her character's first name from American Pie and surname from Buffy Michelle Rosenberg. I did. I fucking did. Oh, Carl, I love you so much. Oh, my God. Thank you. That You really you nailed it. That was great. Uh, old school. Personally, I don't think Joker needs a sequel. It made over a billion dollars. They're going to do something else with that character. They're, it made over a billion bucks. The, the, I don't see how they don't. It'd almost be irresponsible if they don't. All right. No calls in Discord. That means I'm going to close the Discord down. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the first official Dead on Dave live back. Are we fans of it being on Twitch? I don't have a problem with it. I, the numbers were good tonight. We got into the low 20s. I'm okay with that. Now the word will be out that we're back, and I think people are going to dig it quite a bit. So uh, I think that maybe you were thinking of Don Michelle Trachtenberg. I think that you're right. I think that's exactly who I was thinking of because that is Michelle Trachtenberg, and God damn it, now I'm thinking of Michelle Trachtenberg. But Michelle Trachtenberg from fucking uh, Euro Trip, where she was old enough to fuck. Uh, Jordan, did you notice that there was Gary Glitter song in Joker? Yep. yep. That's been pointed out. I watched almost all of those, uh, those type of breakdown YouTube videos, which are very fun. By the way, you want to have a lot of fun. Uh, I recommend if you have not watched it yet, get into the new MonsterVerse movies. The three new MonsterVerse movies that, they're, that they've created uh, Kong Skull Island and the two Godzilla movies, Godzilla and Godzilla King of Monsters. I highly recommend those. If you have yet to see them, watch all three of them. Watch all three of them in a row if you want to. They're fantastic, phenomenal movies, and I love what they're doing. Big spoiler for for the next one, too. Uh, what's going on? Thank you. Real Cirque, I appreciate you. Thank you for the follow touch tip. Give me a dap. Good to have you here. If you're new to the channel, which you probably are since you just followed, we are going to be doing a nightly talk show. But during the day, we're still going to be doing gaming, so that's going to be great. Um, watching all the YouTube videos on the MonsterVerse stuff is so much fun because they point out all the monsters that were shown not only... Uh, in the movie itself, but on the walls, uh, in paperwork, it's just great. I'm a big kaiju fan. I grew up on kaiju. I grew up on the old Godzilla, King Kong movies. It was just my jam. I love them. I have an affinity for them. But these three last movies are actually balling ass good movies. They're fucking great flicks. Amazingly great flicks. So highly, 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 highly recommend those to anybody. So, but if you want to have fun as far as those type of breakdown videos, the genres, that's a great series to get into because they show so much detail. We're going to end on a spoiler because I'm so hyped up 
on the kaiju stuff on the Godzilla. Uh, so more information is coming out about Godzilla versus Kong. It does look like they are setting it up as a prototypical versus movie where they're going to have a third bad guy. But I was not expecting them to go the route that they went. Maybe I was expect earmuffs, earmuffs, earmuffs. But uh, according to the leaks from not only footage that was shown in Korea, but also the toy leaks, the toy leaks, which have spoiled these movies in the past. If you don't want to hear... Put your fingers in your ears because this is a major spoiler because this is who the bad guy of the third movie is going to be. It's Mechagodzilla. They're going straight to Mechagodzilla. I expected it to be Mechagodzilla, but it's not. It's going to be Mechagodzilla, and I think that's going to be fucking insane. Super excited. Uh, and this is an awesome show, Dave. I'm going to be hitting the Shopping Point episode with you uh, uh, with you about Onision calling... 911. I wasn't on that episode tonight. I was on yesterday's episode, but I wasn't on tonight. I, did, I, I wasn't on there. Uh, Jordan, did you see Pacific Rim? I haven't watched it. I know. I know. It was the mech part that got me. It wasn't the monster part that drew me off. It was the mech part. I haven't watched it yet. I want to, and I've heard it's really good, but it was the, the Transformers kind of made me go, fuck. Just, I can't do mech movies in real life anymore, man. I don't know. All right. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. I greatly appreciate you. Let's go find someone to raid. We can still do a nice talk show raid. Probably won't be doing anybody in the talk show. Actually, you know what? That's exactly what I'm going to do. Talk show. Bam. That's exactly yeah, what I'm going to do. Shut Let's up, me. Shut up, me. Let's go find some small podcast trying to talk about something. I think that is a fun thing to do the co-op zone all right i like that I, li I just like the name i like the name let's go give this guy some love thank you guys for hanging out have yourselves a fantastic evening get in there and raid this mother trucker raid everybody raid the dance floor raid what why are you being an asshole okay raid it up all right, guys, get in there and raid, and we're going to get out of here on this. Have yourself a merry little Monday. Uh, we will see you tomorrow. Keep it copious, folks. And remember, as always, if you don't have talent, have talented friends. I'll see you tomorrow for the Game Flip Rule Show. We'll have some fun then. Good night, everybody. Peace, 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 peace.